Hello LEGO fans, Bricks Unbound here with another Building Hogwarts update. And in today's update we're actually taking a look at a completely new section of the castle. It had not been previously worked on at all, so that's pretty exciting. Got actually quite a bit of uh, work done on it. Uh, so what this is, is it is the trophy room. And where this will be located is it fills in this gap right here and sticks out uh, not quite to the edge of the astronomy tower here and then above it will be a continuation of the library that you see over there I took the rough off just for the sake of some better lighting at the moment uh, so continuation of the library on this back section and then over uh, kind of this corner is where the Ravenclaw tower will go uh, just sticking up there we'll put this in place towards the end of the video it'll be a little bit easier to picture that and the trophy room I was originally not planning on putting in this location. I wasn't 100% sure what was going to be here. Um, I originally expected the trophy room to be in this area on the other end, because right now the uh, Defense, Against the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom is kind of the closer section of this to us, and the other side of it was going to be the trophy room, which it might still end up becoming eventually. I'm not... 100% set on this being the trophy room. Everything in there is actually removable, as we will see in a moment. So if I just change my mind on what I want here, I can easily uh, swap some things out. Uh, but this here faces uh, the charms classroom, so that section down there. And it is supposed to be an open place. I'm kind of thinking there'll be some kind of uh, like mosaic type thing of the Hogwarts crest, or at least um, the four Hogwarts house colors here, uh, which is why that section is completely open still. And then I've left spots along here, just in case I changed my mind, I want to attach things. So I didn't completely tile everything yet, which you'll see on the interior of the trophy room as well. So let's actually start taking a look there. So in order to be able to see it easier, and then also just able to get my hands in there easier, uh, this the top section of this wall, uh, just comes off so now we can actually see the interior a little bit better uh, lighting is a challenge in here because of these big archways they really block the back half of the room uh, I might make it so those are removable as well uh, I'm just not entirely sure what that will do with the overall stability here um, of this section so that it is going to have some weight on top of it but uh, anyway, looking inside, uh, immediately in the back, there's this large display case. Uh, and that's really the reason I decided, oh, this should be the uh, trophy room, is that display case. I left that door open. Uh, I just really liked how it came together. And actually, um, it's easily removable. So it just slides out, and then I have this gap in the back so I can take it out easier. Also, the archway wasn't going to line up correctly <laughs> with the window so I didn't continue it across, but here's a, a better look at it, a little bit more lit up, uh, which is one of the disadvantages of using the reddish brown in the back. Maybe I should switch that to a lighter color, um, like a dark bluish gray or something, uh, because it's hard to see the objects in there when it is back in the corner. They're a little dark and don't stand out super well uh, without light shining directly on them. You will see uh, right here there's a couple of tan pieces. Those will be switched out for the reddish brown versions, which I have ordered uh, from Bricklink. Uh, I just don't have them in yet, so couldn't correct the color there. Uh, but those are just the uh, one and two-third tall bricks that have uh, two studs on the side, which I use to attach these large door frame pieces uh, sideways in there and they make very nice large uh, glass looking um, cases and I thought yeah that works pretty well and three of them lined up give me enough room to fit my extra <laughs> infinity stones in there from the various Marvel sets uh, which I think they actually look pretty good in there so that's what's going to be in there <clears throat> for the moment on top there's just a few random gold things there's jumpers for more and I'm sure I'm going to switch out more of these tiles for more jumper plates, just so I can just cover the top of this with various trophies and awards and just other treasure-looking things uh, to better fit kind of the overall vibe of this room from the first book. I think it's really the only time it's ever mentioned. And then the fourth movie, uh, this room appears very briefly, but in a completely different section of the castle. 
Let me just put that in there. Uh, but as you can see underneath, uh, those are just jumper plates that this sits down on. So it doesn't move around or anything once it's in place, uh, but it is very easy to take out if I want to rebuild anything or build up some more treasure and stuff on top of it. There are a couple other display cabinets currently in the room. Um, and this is not going to be like every display that's going to be in here because this wall is completely blank over on the left. Uh, but in the films, there are these large columns that come down and have display cabinets underneath it. So that's what this is uh, recreating. Right now, there's obviously not much around them. I'm thinking little table things like what I have there in the middle will just surround all four sides of these pillars just to fill it up a little bit more. And then you can always recreate that uh, completely terrible scene in the Goblet of Fire movie uh, where Dumbledore, you know, throws Harry into some treasure and goes, Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? In a very un-Dumbledore-like uh, matter, manner. Excuse me. But this isn't a complete version. It's just a in progress. Uh, so also in progress, there is a little display up at the front here uh, at the moment, which I can also pull that out because it's also attached by jumpers. And here's what that looks like. Just some nice <laughs> shiny things on there. Uh, the golden egg from the first task in the fourth book. Um, and then this very nice gold lacquered uh, gold ingot piece. I don't know if that counts as an award, but it could be an award for something. And it's very shiny, so I wanted to have it in this room. Along with a ring. Um, definitely not the one ring. And a little genie lamp, also definitely not the lamp from Aladdin, but, uh, yeah, so I think this looks pretty good. Right now it just has these, uh, large crate pieces forming the base of it, just to give it a little bit of texture. Uh, I might switch out for something else or just use these, uh, more around the room. So that's what we've got underneath this window. There'll be a similar one that hasn't been built yet, but it'll go, uh, on the other side of this window. Another thing i probably going to put on the outside here, again, why I kind of left stuff open, is uh, in the first movie, after Harry becomes a uh, seeker for the Gryffindor team, uh, Hermione takes him by what I'm going to say is the trophy room. <laughs> and outside of it, there's that uh, plaque, I guess, displayed that has his dad's name on it. So I'm thinking there's going to be a little display table in front of each of these windows, too, with just some things like that on it. Um, cause there was a sticker for that particular piece in, uh, the flying lesson set from, was that last year? Um, anyway, whenever that was from, I can put that there, maybe a couple other shields. I guess also I forgot to mention this, but those shields back there on that display cabinet, they're not going to stay just being plain, uh, gray. I might either keep them as gray and put the Hogwarts crest sticker on it or switch them out for some other shield shaped stickers or, uh, change up the color of the piece itself. But going around uh, on this wall, I have the four house banners, and then eventually these knights in front of them, I'm hoping will all be in kind of the house colors. Uh, so right now, really the only one that's in place is the Slytherin one here on the end. That was from a collectible minifigure series a little while ago, but it has kind of the, the dark green and silver look to it. I thought that fit well. Uh, with the Slytherin banner. Uh, the Hufflepuff one will eventually become, I think it was called the Tournament Knight. It was that white, or not white, that black and yellow uh, knight from another one of the Collectible Minifigure series. I think that was during kind of the height of pandemic time, so I never actually managed to find any of those in stores anywhere. So I'll just have to bricklink uh, one of those and put it in place there. I like that gold armor there though, so that'll probably end up, that knight will go somewhere else in the castle just because it's kind of cool looking. And then I don't know yet uh, who I'm going to use, what minifigures for the Gryffindor or Ravenclaw knights. So I'll just have to look around and see if there's a knights that have their general color scheme that I can use. But that does it for what is on the interior at the moment. Uh, it's not complete by any means. Obviously the forest and leaves tiled. I didn't want to do too much tiling though until I figured out where I was going to have display cabinets and things. So at the moment, uh, it's going to pause here. As I order parts for other sections of the castle, I'm planning on just always checking that Bricklink store for any gold parts they have or any, you know, minifig utensil cups and trophies and things like that. So then I can uh, slowly fill this up 
over time. But while I was working on this section of the castle, I figured I might as well start putting some more interior, because it's been a while since I've actually done any kind of interior uh, work. If we turn this around to look at the exterior of it, so as mentioned earlier, this uh, will slide right back into that section. Right now with the astronomy tower sitting there, I can't just push it and slide it in, unfortunately. I actually broke off one of the torches on the astronomy tower. Uh, but this uh, build here mirrors the library on the other side, or I guess technically the charms classroom, the lower section. Uh, for the exterior here, it's going to have a just a mirrored version of what you see up there uh, on top of it. And you can see there's actually this big overhang right here. And we'll see that a little bit better once I put this in place, but it slides over this angled roof section that goes into the astronomy tower courtyard there. Ignore the mess of things. Uh, but it does actually overhang it a little bit. That way I can have this tower be the same width and everything as the other tower over there. And even when you look at official like um, photos of the model, that's what they did there. It just overhangs. Uh, or maybe it doesn't overhang, but it juts out over that roof a little bit or into the roof a little bit. So I wanted to recreate that. Let's go ahead and push this back into place and then we'll take a look at it once it's in place. All right, so now I've got it spun around and put back into place here. Uh, so there's that little window here that just faces this, uh, I guess you could kind of call it a courtyard <laughs> section right there. Um, and then as I said, this uh, overhangs the courtyard on this side. But I think it's looking pretty good in place there. Obviously, I need to keep building up the support columns in there so I can actually set things on top of it. But let's uh, take a walk around so we can kind of look down at it from above a little bit more. And I really just like kind of walking around <laughs> the room and looking through all of the various towers and turrets and things. Uh, okay, <laughs> and we're back here. So I had the roof taken off of here, but I can easily put that back on. But this will just be essentially mirrored just straight across. So it'll have this tower section, this other short little tower, I guess, this large window, all of this just duplicated on the other side. And then the library inside there. Um, what I'm picturing for this middle section is that there will actually be an opening here. So students could walk on a little walkway around to get to the other half of the library. So it'll come out, you know, four or six studs, something like that here, and just go all the way around. They can look down to see that nice little mosaic that I'll eventually build into the floor. And then they can walk over to the other half of the library, uh, which is probably I'll have like Madame Pince's desk somewhere in here and a little bit of restricted section in the, the back corner probably. So she can be uh, watching over that. It's great that we have a Madame Pence figure too. I didn't think they'd ever do that because she, you know, doesn't really have much of a role in the movies at all. I think she briefly appears in one of them. I mean, she must since we have a figure now. Um, but it's actually nice to have a figure who can work the <laughs> library. But anyway, so library section here and then in the middle. Uh, so a square from here and then to here. Basically, it lines up with these roof sections, they'll just come straight up to it, is going to be where I'm putting Ravenclaw Tower. I know I've mentioned that before, but um, it's going to be <clears throat> here in the middle and keep coming up. It'll probably be roughly this height here, uh, even-ish with um, that walkway. It might go up a little bit higher. The important thing is it can't be as tall as the Ashanti Tower, because uh, it's not as tall in the books. I think Ravenclaw Tower is supposed to be the second tallest tower, though, in the book descriptions. It definitely is not in the way the movies built it, and this is based off of how it looks in the movies, <clears throat> um, because obviously the Grand Staircase Tower is going to be the second tallest. It's kind of the tallest in the movies. We'll, we'll see. It's roughly the same height, actually, as the Astronomy Tower is right now. Anyway, so Ravenclaw Tower will be pretty tall. Its design will be very similar, uh, to, or at least the, the top section of it. It's going to be very similar to these bell towers. But it will just <clears throat> come right up out of here. Ravenclaw Common Room is going to be close to the top of it, uh, probably in approximately what this type of section is. Uh, it's not going to look quite the same as that. It'll have actual windows instead of those uh, 
slat looking things that those have. But I'm looking forward to getting to building that because then this large empty spot that's been empty for years, like literally years, uh, will finally get filled in. Oh, that'll feel good. Anyway, let me know what you think about this uh, in the comments down below. And please keep coming back for more videos. Thank you for watching.